Imagine that you've manually annotated a brain and you want to compare your segmentations to the ones done by somebody else. The most popular way of doing this is through calculating something called a dice coefficient. And simply put, it's 2 multiplied by the intersection or overlap between different segmentations divided by the sum of each segmentation separately. This provides a very simple, clear metric to measure the amount of overlap or agreement between different researchers' segmentations. And in this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to use Freeview, part of the FreeSurfer Imaging Suite, to create your own regions of interest, and then to calculate the dice coefficient between your segmentation and somebody else's, or against the segmentations automatically generated through FreeSurfer's Recon All program. In this case, in this directory, I have my raw T1 weighted anatomical image and a segmentation image, which I'll get to later. I also have the FreeSurfer output directory, which contains all the automatically generated files from FreeSurfer. For example, the APARC plus ASEG.MGZ image that's part of the MRI folder. If you have FreeSurfer installed, type Freeview from the terminal, and you should see this window. I'm going to expand it to use the entire screen. Then click on File, Load Volume, and select the T1-weighted MGZ file. Click OK. Now you see all of the different orthogonal views. We're also going to load another volume, which is within the FreeSurfer output MRI folder, APARC plus ASEG.MGZ. We're also going to show the color map in the lookup table that comes with FreeSurfer by default. You can see all the different structures in the different colors. I'm going to focus here on just one structure, the left putamen. Keep in mind FreeSurfer's orientation, right is on the left, left is on the right. And I'm going to click on show as isosurface in 3D view to give you a better sense of where exactly this structure is located. Now let's zoom in on that three-dimensional view in the lower right. And we can use a couple different buttons to simply focus on that view. You can change these different sliding windows to give a better sense of where exactly in three-dimensional space the putamen lies. For example, we know that it's located right below the caudate and below the ventricle as well. We're going to be using this get a better sense of where exactly we want to make our annotations to recapture where this structure is located. Let's go back to our three orthogonal views. Uncheck the box next to a park plus ASEG to hide it. Go to File, New Volume, and let's call this Left Putamen. And the template volume is going to be T1 to make it have the same dimensions as the anatomical image. Change the lookup table to Free Surfer Color Lookup Table, which gives you the benefit of being able to highlight any of those options in that window in the lower left. And when you do so, the brush value is automatically updated to reflect that value associated with that structure. I'm going to start with a brush value of 2, but you can change it depending on whether you need to be more fine tuned or if you need bigger brush strokes. I also like the axial view, but you can use whichever one that you want. Notice that the putamen is separate from the globus pallidus, also called the pallidum in FreeSurfer, and the nucleus accumbens to the north. Now we're going to start by clicking and dragging my left mouse button to fill in any voxels I think belong to this particular structure. So just keep going, see how much you need, and if you need to, you can also hold shift and right click to change the overall contrast to give you a better sense of the boundaries between the putamen and the other structures. Now the putamen and the globus pallidus form something called the lentiform nucleus. It's a core structure of the striatum and the basal ganglia. Very important in things like movement and coordination. The nucleus accumbens on the other hand is involved in reward processing. It receives a lot of dopaminergic projections from the ventral tegmental area, the mesolimbic system. 
Now, you can use the left, sorry, the up and down arrows to go between different slices. And if you need to, you can change the brush size to make more fine-tuned adjustments. Now, if you make a mistake, you can hold down Command, then Z on a Mac to remove the last stroke, or you can hold down Shift and left click to remove any voxels that you drew. I'm gonna refill the ones that I just deleted in here. You can also use something called a polygonal line tool to mark out with individual left clicks the boundary of the structure you want to fill in. So I'm gonna do that roughly where the putamen is and then select the bucket tool and left click in the boundaries to then fill it in. So those are a few options, different ways to use the voxel edit tool to create a new region of interest. At the same time, you can create another structure, let's say the right putamen, with the same default settings that we had before. Also using the lookup table. And now we can start filling in the voxels we believe belong to this structure. Okay, so it's separate from the left putamen. This is now the right putamen. We can scroll down and highlight that part of the lookup table associated with that structure and start filling it in again. Same thing as what we did before. This is not going to be exhaustive, just showing you a few example slices. And obviously you would do it in the other orthogonal views as well. So get acquainted with it and also realize that this is a, a really useful tool to get acquainted with neural anatomy, to try to compare different segmentations between researchers and so on. I want to show you also how to save out these volumes. So click on file, whatever is highlighted in the volumes bar, in this case, right putamen, is going to be saved out. I'm going to put this in my segmentation demo folder, call it right putamen, and by default, it will be saved as a .mgz file. I do this for left putamen as well by highlighting it, going to file, save volume, save it in the same directory, and let's call it left putamen. I'm gonna go back to my terminal briefly and illustrate how to combine these two. So I clicked Control Z, then BG to run both the terminal and Freeview at the same time. If I want to convert these into something like nifty format, I can use MRI convert, followed by the name of the structure I want to convert, and then the output, in this case, leftputamen.nii. I can do the same thing for the right putamen, and then use any image calculator I want to combine the two. In this case, I'm going to use AFNI's 3D Calc because I'm showing you how to use the output from Freeview in a different software package. So this is the code I would use, called the prefix, the output's gonna be putamens. I give the arguments of both right putamen, left putamen, and then the mathematical expression is simply add the two together. And now I can look at this updated combined segmentation file by loading putamens. And same thing, color lookup table, Okay, that's all good. And now if I look at it, and I can uncheck the other individual ones, Putamens contains both of them with the right value in each of them. I believe it's 12 in the left Putamen and 51 in the right Putamen. So these are segmentations, again, just for ease of use to put them into a single file that you can edit if you want. Let's move on to a concept called the dice coefficient, which is a measure of similarity between different segmentations. If I look at the automatic output from FreeSurfer, a perk plus a seg, in this case, just the left putamen, and then my segmentation, the dice coefficient is gonna give me a measure of overlap between them. Formally, it's defined as two multiplied by the intersection, or the amount of voxel overlap between them, divided by each of the voxel patterns separately for each segmentation. It's very useful for comparing segmentations across groups, for example, to see how much agreement there is between them 
and to formally quantify it. Let's go back to the terminal. And first we need to make sure that the output from FreeSurfer, APRC plus ASEG, is in the same space as my native T1 weighted image. This is the code. You can also find it in the more info box down below. All I'm doing here is saying, register the APRC plus ASEG image to my original T1 weighted image, just to make sure they're aligned appropriately before I do any kind of dice coefficient similarity analysis. We can then use a command called MRI seg overlap. I'm showing you the output from the help here to calculate the dice coefficient, which will be output by default. You can also do the yeah, card or another coefficient if you want, but for now, we're gonna stick with the dice coefficient. So type MRI seg overlap, and then I'm gonna give this input of a manual segmentation I did, and also the APARC in raw AVG. That's the co-registered APARC plus ASEG image. Now this segmentation file, you may wonder what it is. This is, a, I think, of roughly a dozen structures that were segmented by hand, which included things like the fusiform cortex, inferior temporal cortex, rostral middle frontal cortex, and a few other ones in both the left and right hemispheres. And what we're going to do is compare that to the APRC plus ASEG segmentations, which you can see when I highlight them below. So when I run this, the output is going to be a dice coefficient score for each structure. How much overlap was there between the automatic output from FreeSurfer and the manual segmentation that I did? And you'll see scores ranging from around 0.6 to 0.85 roughly. There's some debate about what a good dice coefficient is, and there's more info in the box down below.